Hello and welcome to another video. This video is mainly going to be about the innate immune system. Now, your immune system uses two main strategies to defeat any type of unwanted invaders. One of the strategies is called the innate immune system and the other one is called the acquired immune system. The innate immune system is mainly present since birth and is therefore sometimes also called the natural immune system. While the acquired, however, forms during a person's lifetime and is therefore sometimes also called the adaptive. Now, just remember that the baby also has some type of acquired immune system. I just put the baby there to show you that you've always had the innate immune system ever since you were born. So now let's put this to practice. Imagine we have three different types of bacteria, right? The innate immune system is what we call non-specific because it actually works against any type of agents equally. The adaptive, however, works very specific as you see right here. And not only that, upon defeating the bacteria, you gain some kind of immunological memory, which usually becomes enhanced upon repeated exposure to the same agents. The innate immunity doesn't really have that, and so let's see how that works. We mainly classify the innate immune system into three different types. The first is what we call general factors, and we've got the cellular factors, and we also have the humoral factors. Um, the general factors include physiological barriers at the portal of entry like the skin and the mucous membranes and they're usually and logically enough the first line of defense next we have the pyrogenic reactions now don't get scared if you haven't heard this term before i'll get more into this later when I talk about the uh, macrophages mainly but uh, pyrogenic reactions often uh, refer to as fever some viruses and bacteria cannot really replicate optimally because the body changes its temperature so uh, that's why we called it the general factors because it works generally by increasing the temperature. Another general factors are secretion, you know, secretion of different enzymes, fatty acids. The cellular factors, we got your own microbiota fighting for space and food. Phagocytosis by cells like neutrophils and macrophages. They do that by the different receptors they have on the surface. We also got natural killer cells. So they're really important for the antiviral immune response. These cells can bind to surface of antigens by using toll-like receptors, which usually lead to inflammatory response. Um, we also got humoral factors, which include the complement system and the interferons. Now, I know this seems a lot, but trust me, it all gets logical once you understand the concept. In my opinion, if you want to learn immunology properly, you need to understand different parts individually before you can understand the whole concept together in, in a system. And that's what I'm aiming to show you, everything individually first and then put them all together and show you how this works in the system. Alright, so in this video I'm mainly going to focus on the general factors because those are really important factors to start with when you want to understand immunology. Now, imagine these are your epithelial cells. Let's say this is your skin for example. Um, the first one includes physical barrier where bacteria cannot really enter because of the tight junctions these cells really have. Another mechanism is when the bacteria can't enter because of secreted products, could be free fatty acids released by your gastrointestinal tract or enzymes released at the mucous membrane. So let's do it like that. In the saliva, sweat glands and tears, we have something called lysozyme, which when secreted out, they break down the peptidoglycan layer of the bacterial cell wall. Next, you know the gastrointestinal tract? You got some cells on the walls of your stomach called parietal and chief cells. Chief cells can release pepsin, which breaks down the uh, proteins of certain bacteria. And parietal cells mainly release hydrochloric acid for lowering the pH. We can also have defensins in the gastrointestinal tract. And the list goes on and on. The point is that we secrete out quite a lot of substances as a part of our general innate immunity. Some bacteria can actually get through all of this uh, mess without even getting hurt. And those are the bacteria that usually makes us sick. All right, so what else do we have? You know the normal microbiota you have in your body? They actually protect you by making a hard environment for the foreign bacteria to grow in by taking up space and food, for example. So, um, that's mainly the general factors I wanted to talk about. Now from the cellular factors, we've already talked about the microbiota, limiting the pathogenic bacteria from growing. In my next video, we will look at what toleric receptors are and how phagocytosis happens in details and steps in inflammation. 
um, natural killer cells has a cytotoxic mechanism and I feel like it's more logical to talk about it later when I talk about the cellular immune response as it kind of fits more there. Alright, so let's look at these. 